send unto the Holy Ghost, the God of creation. Thank you, we give you all the praise. We magnify your name, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We thank you for the moon and stars. We thank you for the peace and love. We thank you for this sight and sound. We thank you for the good and life. We thank you for the happiness and joy. Thank you. Living water. Thank you. I say we thank you for living water. Thank you. Thank you, Papa. Thank you. I say thank you, Dad. Soon, we 
We are going to see the king. Soon and very soon. We are going to see the king. Soon I am Papa. We are going to see the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm going to see the king. Soon and very soon. We are going to see the king. Soon and very soon. We are going to see the king. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we are going to see the King. Oh, 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 oh. Jesus is the King and Jesus is the Lord. Oh, Jesus is Alpha and Omega and all. Oh, Jesus is the beginning and Jesus is the last. Oh, Jesus is the beginning and Jesus is the end. Ya 
He said he could take me. Jesus will give you rest with peace and love. Rock of ages, come to Jesus. He's ready to give you rest with peace and love and joy and happiness. Brethren in the Lord, let us stand up and worship Jehovah God in his beauty of holiness. Thank you, Jesus. We give you the praise. We give you the praise, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
again we magnify his name oh the blood of jesus that washes white like snow oh the blood of jesus that washes white like snow oh the blood of jesus that redeems you by the power of the blood of the lamb Oh, the blood of Jesus that removes every blemish upon your life. Oh, the blood of Jesus that takes away every pain, that takes away every sorrow, that takes away every sadness, that takes away every impossibility in your life. The blood of Jesus the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We give you all the praise once again in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let your name be glorified in Jesus' name. As we apply the blood of Jesus, let the blood of Jesus go ahead right now and make a way by the power of the blood of the Lamb in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let the blood go ahead and make a way where there is no way in the name of Jesus. Let the blood of Jesus go ahead and begin to open doors for you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let the blood of Jesus go ahead and begin to open doors for you by the power of the blood of the Lamb in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let the blood of Jesus go ahead 
and begin to pull down strongholds in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let the blood of Jesus go ahead and begin to shake down every plan of the enemy in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the blood of Jesus go ahead you right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Are you going on a journey right now? Are you traveling on a journey right now? Where is that place that you are traveling to? Are you going on holidays? Are you going on a journey? Is there a journey that you are going to right now? Are you on your way to work right now? Or you are doing a shift that is almost on your way to work? And you are on the bus on your way to your work right now? And you are listening to this video on your way to work? I apply the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth to go ahead of you right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Whatever it is that you are doing, on a journey that you are going, on a way that you are going, on holidays that you are going, whatever way it is that is making a way for you, let that power in the blood of Jesus strain into your life right now and open doors in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Every door that the enemy has shut against you right now, I apply the power in the blood of the Lamb to open those doors right now. Our God is a God that opens doors. He makes a way where no man can. He opens doors where no man can see. He makes a way where there is no way, where the enemy thought there is no way. God will open doors for you in the mighty name of Jesus. The power in the blood of the Lamb will open doors for you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, we give you all the praise. Jehovah Shalom, we exalt your mighty name. Let your name be glorified in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We thank God once again for giving us the grace, the power and ability to be able to glorify his name to be able to worship him in spirit and in truth. The Bible said, They that worship the Lord shall worship God in spirit and in truth. As pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, let our worship be unto the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings in spirit right now and in truth, so that all our prayers will be answered. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, every enemy that may want to hinder our prayers right now, let the power of God roast them alive. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Bible said Daniel prayed. He prayed, but his prayer was hindered by the prince of Persia. But God has already sent an answer to his prayer. But his prayer was hindered on the way. The enemy did not allow the prayer to reach him where he was. The prayer was blocked on the way by the prince of Persia. Maskabu sikibu, ratataraba kebusi, makandabu sikiribu sikiti. I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit of the living God. Every enemy that might want to bring hindrance upon these prayers, I command the fire of the Holy Ghost to roast them alive in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. As you receiving this prayer, O oh Lord, begin to receive it instantly in the name of Jesus. Begin to receive instant healing. Begin to receive instant healing. Wherever you are, begin to receive receive instant healing by the power of the Holy Spirit of the living God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Denying God 
and beholding the power thereof, denying God and beholding the power thereof. Matthew 26 from 69 to 73 says, Peter sat without in a place, and damsel came to meet him, saying, Thou was with Jesus in Galilee. But he denied before all of them, saying, I know not what thou seest. And when he had gone into the porch, another maid saw him and said unto thee, This fellow was also with Jesus of Nazareth. And again, Peter denied with an oath. He even swore an oath. And again, I do not know this man. And after a while came him and stood by and said, Peter, surely, surely, three, the third man came, surely this man was with Jesus. Surely thou art one of them. And for thy spirit breathed thee. And he began to curse and swear. He began to curse and swear, saying, I know not this man. And immediately the cock crew. And Peter remembered the word of Jesus, which said, Before the cock crew, thou shalt deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. He went out and he wept bitterly. He went out and wept bitterly. How many times have we been denying God in the things that we are doing? What is that thing that we are doing that make us to deny God and deny him and tell me, God, I don't know you. God, I don't want to associate with you. God, I have nothing in common with you at all. Do your own and let me do my own. Remain where you are. Let me remain where I am. We deny God in so many things that we do. Denying God and the power therein. Denying God and the power therein. First John chapter 2, verse 22 to 23. First John chapter 2, verse 20, 22. First John chapter 2, verse 22 to 23. Who is a liar? You see? I read for verse 20. But ye have an unction of the Holy One, and ye know all things, because ye know not the truth, because ye know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar, but he denied that Jesus is the Christ. He is Antichrist and denied the Father of the Son. The Bible said, Whosoever denied the Son of Man, the same had not the Father. But he that acknowledged that Jesus Christ, the Father also, let that therefore abide in you, which ye have had from the beginning. If that which ye have had from the beginning, ye shall remain in you, ye shall continue in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he has promised us, even eternal life. Whosoever denied the Father, ah, the same had not seen the Father. Anytime we deny the Father, it means that we have not seen the Father. 
we have not associated with the Father because we deny him that we don't want to associate with him. Let him therefore abide in you which we have had from the beginning. From the beginning. And this is the promise that he had promised us even to eternal life. He has promised us even to eternal life. What is that thing that you are doing to deny God? What is that your behavior that you are doing to deny God and tell God, God, I don't know you. I don't want to associate with you. Leave me alone. Let me lead my life. I want to do it the way I know how to do it. It's not your business. It's my business. I own myself. You don't own me. But you have forgotten that the Bible says your body is the temple of God. God has a plan and purpose for you, which is to bring you to an unexpected end. But many times we deny Christ in our behavior and in our attitude. And when we deny Christ, we deassociate from Christ completely. And in that way, we don't reckon with Christ again. The Bible says, my sheep hear me and they know my voice. If we deny Christ, we cannot be able to reckon with his voice again. The Bible says, Jesus speaks in a small, still voice. When you want to do something, he will only speak with you with a small, still voice. He does not make noise. The Bible says empty barrels make the most noise. If somebody comes to you and the person is shouting on you, Hey, I will do this. Oh, you don't know me. Oh, ah, I'm the man. You don't know me. The person is shouting and shouting and shouting. It's an empty barrel. He cannot do anything. If you take an empty barrel now and you don't have anything inside it and you are rolling it on the floor, it will begin to make noise. But when you put oil inside it and you roll it, it will stay silent. It will not make noise. Empty barrels make the most noise. We deny Jesus and the power therein. Second John chapter one, verse seven. Second John chapter one, verse seven. It tells us, verse six, and this is love that we walk after his commandment. That as ye have heard from the beginning, that ye should walk in it, walk in the commandment of God. For many deceivers have entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. This is the deceiver and the antichrist. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things that we have wrought, that we receive a full reward. That is the reason why you must know the word of God, so that nobody can deceive you in the word of God. Nobody can twist it for you. When somebody tells you something, like what I am saying now, if you want to know it, go back into your Bible and check it and see whether what I am saying is corresponding with the word of God or is not corresponding with the word of God. Check it and see if it's corresponding with the word of God. Whosoever transgresses and abided not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. He had abided in the doctrine of Christ, both he and both the Father and the Son. And if there come any unto you that bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him Godspeed. For he that biddeth him, Godspeed him, partaker of his evil deeds. Partaker of his evil deeds. 
denying God and knowing the power therein. Second John, Luke chapter 10, verse 16. Luke chapter 10, verse 16. Luke chapter 10, verse 16. Says, and thou, Caperium, which had exalted to heaven, be thrust down from hell. He heareth you and heareth me. And despise you, despise me that he despised and despised him that sent me. When we deny God, it means that we are denying. We are, when we deny Jesus, it means we are indirectly denying the Father that sent Jesus to come and die for your sins. Remember, all have sinned and are falling short of the glory of God. You cannot say that you are righteous. You cannot say that you are righteous. The Bible says in the eyes of man, everybody thinks he is good. In your own eye, you are thinking that you are right. In your own eye, you are thinking that you don't sin. In your own eye, you are thinking that you serve God. Because you go to church every day, in your own eye, you are thinking that you are doing what is right in the presence of the Lord. In your own eye, you are thinking that you serve God every day. You do what he wants you to do. You worship him every day. You glorify him every day. In the eyes of man, everybody is right. In the eyes of man, everybody is doing what is right. But it's not like that in the eyes of God. Because anytime you are in his presence, God is looking at your heart. What do you have in your heart? It is inside out of the abundance of heart. The mouth speak it. It is what is coming out of your heart. Just as things are like adultery, pride, anger, jealousy, malice, all those kind of things, covetousness. When you covet your brother's wife, you covet your sister's husband and take him to your cell. All those things are what come out of a man and defile a man and make a man what he is. That's why the Bible says, that's why the Bible says that not all that call Lord, Lord shall come into the kingdom of God. But those that do the will of the Father who is in heaven. Jesus commanded us in the book of Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 16 to 8. Verse 16 to 18. Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 to 18. He gave us a commandment there. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 to 18. He gave us a commandment. He said, See that no one render evil for evil to any man. See that none render evil to evil, but ever follow that which is good amongst yourself. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. Pray in everything. Give thanks for this is the will of God Christ concerning you. Jesus gave a commandment. Pray without ceasing. Pray every time. Spend time in his presence. Pray without ceasing. Without ceasing means every time. In the evening, in the afternoon, in the night, whatever thing that you are doing in your place of work, pray. Pray without ceasing. How many times do we follow the commandment of God? Anytime we refuse to follow the commandment of God, we are indirectly denying God and the power therein. We are indirectly denying God and the power therein. God is the ultimate. 
you cannot do without serving him. You cannot do without worshiping him. Everybody wants to get to heaven, but not everybody is it that does the will of the Father. Everybody wants to pray to get to heaven. Everybody wants God to answer their prayer, but not everything that everybody does is holy and righteousness. Everybody has money, but not every money that comes from the right source. Everybody wants to be rich and successful. Not everybody that you see that has money, that is rich and powerful, not all of them, not all their money comes from the right source. But yet, we all want to pray to get to heaven, to where heaven is. That's why the Bible talk of denying God. Anytime we fail to do what God asks us to do and to follow his commandment, we are indirectly denying God and the power therein. Matthew chapter 10, verse 31 to 33. Matthew chapter 10, from verse 31 to 33. 31 to 33. Fear ye not, therefore. Fear ye not, therefore. Ye are not more than many sparrows. Whosoever, therefore, shall confess me before, confess men, him I will confess before my father. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Anytime you confess Jesus Christ before God, he will confess you to the Father. But when we deny, deny him, he will also deny us when we get into heaven. He will deny us. Let us read Matthew chapter 7, verse 23. Matthew chapter 7, verse 23. Matthew chapter 7, verse 23. I read from verse 21. Not everyone that said, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Not everyone. Not everyone that say, Lord, Lord, shall enter into his kingdom. Not everyone that, that, that is worshipping, that's doing, that we enter into the, there is a but. There is something you need to do. Because, because you are, you are, you are, you are doing things of God and you think that in your own eyes you are holy in your own eyes you are righteous in your own eyes you don't do anything that is wrong in your own eyes you don't hurt people in your own eyes you don't slander people in your own eyes you are worshiping God the way he wants you to worship in him now God is telling you not everyone that say Lord Lord shall enter into his kingdom. But he that doeth the will of the Father which is in heaven. What is the will of the Father? The will of the Father is not to hate your neighbor. The will of the Father is to love your neighbor as yourself. The will of the Father is to not to bring your friend down. The will of the Father is to desist from smoking. The will of the Father is to desist from every bad habit that that you are doing that is the will of the father many will say unto me lord lord we prophesied in your name we prophesied in your name I was, we was one of those that was prophesying on your name. We were prophesying in your name and in thy name and we cast out devils have we not prophesied in your name and in thy name cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works? But I will profess unto them, I never knew you. 
Depart from me, ye that walk iniquity. That will not be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The power that will enable you and I to do the will of the Father and to do what God asks us to do. God has laid down his commandment in the Bible. We need to follow them and do what he asks us to do. Remember the Bible says all have sinned and are falling short of the glory of God. Don't look at yourself as if you are righteous. Even Paul himself said, even Paul, even Paul, Paul said, Paul called himself a chief sinner. O Lord, Paul, who served God every day, called himself a chief sinner because he prophesied himself and he knew himself that he is a sinner. He is not worthy. To call upon the name of Jesus. You are not worthy to call upon the name of Jesus. But it is because of the grace of God. That give you and I access into his presence. And we are not supposed to be allowed. To misinterpret or misabuse. That grace that God has given you and I. To be able to have access into his presence. Now, therefore, hear these saints are mine, that do them, I will liken him unto a wise man who built his house upon the rock, and the rain descended, and when the flood came and blew, they beat the house and it did not fail. When you are doing the will of God, and you don't deny God, the Bible says you will be like a man that built his house upon the rock. When the devil hits you, when the enemy hits you, when the enemy bring all the kinds of temptation, that's what the Bible is talking about here. He's talking about it. When the wind blew, the wind the Bible is talking about is what the devil is bringing against you. All the temptation the enemy is bringing against you and me to bring us down, to make sure that we, to make sure that we do something wrong, to fall in his presence. When those things begin to come, because of the fact that we have been doing his will, because we have been standing in his presence all day, Jesus will stand by our side and everything will begin to come. But the Bible said, we shall not fall. We shall be be like a rock that is standing because on Christ's solid rock I stand. On Christ's solid rock you stand. All other sand is sinking sand. I pray for you by the power of the Holy Spirit of the living God. That the power that will enable you power that will enable you to stand in his presence. Let it rest upon you right now by the power of the Holy Spirit of the living God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Luke chapter 9 from 25 to 26. Luke chapter 9 from 25 to 26. Yes, 25 to 26. For what a man, what is a man advantage if he gain the whole world and lose himself to be cast away? For whatsoever shall be, whosoever shall be ashamed of me and my word, shall the Son of Man be ashamed of? When he shall come in his glory and his father and his holy angels, I will tell you the truth. There is some standing here which shall not taste death till they see the kingdom of God. There is some standing that will not taste death until they see the kingdom of God. Anyone that is ashamed of God, the Bible says, whosoever shall be ashamed of me and my words, 
of him shall the son of man be ashamed when he shall come in his own glory. When you are ashamed of the word of God, at the end of it, God too will be ashamed of us. There's no need to be ashamed of the word of God. There's no need to be ashamed to speak the word of God to your friend. There's no need to be ashamed of the things of the kingdom because the power, the power God has given you and I, the power, 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 ability and power to profess his name. Ability and power to profess his name. Ability and power to profess his name. Luke chapter 12, verse 9. Luke chapter 12, verse 9. Luke chapter 12, verse 9. And I say unto you, Whosoever shall confess me, him shall my the son of man confess before the angels. But he that deny me before men shall be denied before the angels of God. When we deny God, we are telling God, I don't know you. When we are about to get to the step to get to heaven, God will also deny us as well. Because we said we don't know him. The, at, the, at that time, he will also set us aside and deny that person. I never knew thee. Depart from me, ye that walk iniquity. It is those that do the will of the Father. Without holiness, no one shall see the Lord. We need to try to attain holiness. It is with the power of holiness that God will grant us access into his presence. Without you and I attaining holiness, without you and I desisting from sin, without you and I keeping holy and, and getting away from that things that you are doing in secret, God sees everything. Even though you hide it, God sees everything. That thing that you are doing, you need to desist from it. Keep holy. It is with the power of holiness and righteousness that you can be able to have access into his presence. Because when you deny God, you are telling him, I don't, we, you don't want to associate with him. When you continue to do all those things that are wrong, you are telling God, we don't want to associate with him. You are denying God and the power Daring, denying God and the power therein. Luke chapter 12, verse 9. No, Titus chapter 1, verse 16. Titus chapter 1, verse 16. Or, yeah, or Titus chapter 1, verse 6. Verse 6. Yes, verse 6. Hmm? Verse 6. Thank you, Jesus. Eh? If any man be blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful, not accused of riot or unruly. Hmm? For a bishop must be blameless as a steward of God, not self-willed, not soon angry, and not given to wine. These are the qualities of somebody who call himself a Christian, who want to do the will of God, who want to serve God, be blameless, a steward of God. Somebody who is a steward of God, somebody who want to get close to God, somebody who want to associate with God, somebody who want to mingle with God, somebody who want to get the things that God require from him must be blameless, a husband of one wife, having faithful children and not accused of riot or unruly. Riot, causing riot, causing chaos everywhere. Eh? Must be blameless and not soon angry and not giving to wine. Not giving to wine. No striker and not giving filthy lucra. 
but a lover of hospitality and a lover of good men must be sober, just, holy, temperate, holding fast the faithful words as he has been taught, that he may be able to be a sound doctrine, both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers, for there are many unruly vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision, whose mouth must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things that they ought not, fulfill the lucrative sick. One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said, The Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. This witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke, rebuke them sharply, that they may be sound in faith, not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men, and turn from the truth unto the pure, all things that are pure. But unto them that are defied and unbelieving is not impure. But even their mind and conscience is defiled, and they profess that they know God, but in their works they deny Him, being abominable and disobedient, and unto every work reprobate. They profess that they know God. They profess that they are close to God. They profess that the things of God are theirs. They profess the power of God. They profess that they know God, but yet they get angry. They profess that they know God, but yet they are committing sin. They profess that they know God, but yet they are doing the things that they ought not to do. And yet they are professing with their mouth that they know God. They know God. That's what the Bible says. They profess that they know God, but they deny him being abominable. Deny him. We pro profess that they know God, but they are denying God in the things that they are doing, in their actions, in their behavior. They are denying God in their behavior, but yet they use their mouth to profess his name, that they know God, and they are denying him. First John chapter 1 verse 6. First John chapter 1, verse 6. If we say we have fellowship with him and we walk in darkness, we lie and we do not know the truth. As he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sins. But if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. You see, if we say we have no sin, if we say we are righteous, the Bible say in, uh, in, the, in the eyes of man, everybody is good in his own eyes. Everybody does what is right. In your own eyes, you are super. In your own eyes, you don't commit sin. In your own eyes, you, you do the right thing that you are supposed to do. In your own eyes, you are close to God. In your own eyes, you don't talk about other people. In your own eyes, you are the best person that gets close to God. You do the right thing. You worship God. You go to church. You bless his name. You give your tithe. You do everything. But yet the Bible says all have sinned and are falling short of the glory of God. When you begin to look at yourself, when you begin to proclaim to yourself in your own eyes that you are right in your own eyes, then pride will come in. Pride. The Bible says pride cometh after a fall. All have sinned and are falling short of the glory of God. You cannot say that you are right in your own eyes. Because the Bible said when they call, when they call Jesus good teacher, what shall we do to inherit the kingdom of God? The Bible said no one is good except God. No one is right. No one is good except God. No one is right. 
Only God, the Bible, Jesus said it. Good teacher. They call Jesus good teacher. Jesus said, why do you call me good? Why do you profane me as a good man? No one is good except God. When the Bible said no one is good except God, it means that you are not good. It means that I am not good. It's the grace of God that help us to be able to attain what we need to attain. As a result of that, we don't need to abuse that grace. All we need to do is to continue to pray, Lord, have mercy upon me, miserable sinner. Have you forgotten what that that man said in the Bible, he said a man came and he said, Lord, I am not like that one. I pay my tithe every day. I serve you every day. I go to church every day. I do the things I'm supposed to do in the house of God. I go to put on the best dress and I wear clothes. I do the what I'm supposed to do in your house. I am a right man. I am a good man. But the other man came and said, Lord, have mercy upon me, miserable sinner. And the Bible said, the man who said, Lord, have mercy upon me, miserable sinner, went home justified. He was justified because he knew he was a sinner. But the other one was so proud. I pay my tithe in the church every day. I do the things I'm supposed to do in the house. I come to your house every day. I serve you every day. I worship you every day. And I'm doing the right thing I'm supposed to do in your house. I am a right man. I am a good man. I am a best man. Be careful. Be careful. Pride comet after a fall. Be careful. Be careful, pride comes after a fall. Denying God, when you are doing that, we are denying God and telling God, do your own and let me do my own. I pray for you by the power of the Holy Spirit of the living God, the power that will rest upon you, permanently that will give you access to be able to know what is right from what is wrong. It shall transpire upon your life by the power of the Holy Ghost in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. First John chapter 36 verse 8. First John chapter, chapter 3 from verse 6 to 8. 6 to 8. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not, and whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, not know him. You see, little children, let no man deceive you, for he that doeth righteous is righteous, and he, even he is righteous, but he that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of Man was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. The devil sinned from the beginning. Anytime we are sinning against God, we are denying God. Anytime we commit sin, we are denying God. We are denying God and the power therein. Denying God and the power therein. Jude chapter 1 verse 4. Jude chapter 1. Verse 4. Verse, For there was a certain man crept in unawares who were before the Lord ordained unto this condemnation. Ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lavishness. Ungodly men who are turning the grace of God unto lavishness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. They are turning his grace into lavishness and they are denying the Lord God, Jesus Christ. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this, how the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believeth not. Destroyed them that believeth not. 
There are many people who don't believe the word of God. There are many people who don't believe in miracles. Miracles that they are, you are, they are seeing. They don't believe in it. They think it's just a flamboyant thing. But have you forgotten what the Bible says? Eh? They don't believe in miracles. He that hear it, let him hear what the Spirit say unto the churches. He that hear it, let him hear what the Spirit say unto the churches. Because the God of this world has blinded their eyes not to see, not to see the right thing that they are supposed to see. Matthew chapter 7 from verse 21 to 23. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 to 23. Matthew chapter 7, 21. Not everyone that said, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of God. I've read that before. But those that do it, the will of the Father, which is in heaven. So for the fact that you are crying, Lord, Lord, for the fact that you are going to church every day, does not, it is, it is right. It's not that it's not good. Going to church, God wants us to fellowship with one another. That is one thing. He wants us to have fellowship with one another. We have to have fellowship with one another. It is one thing that can also give us access into his presence. We have to fellowship. When we fellowship with one another, when we rejoice and we dance in his presence, we must also ensure that our works are also good. The works, the works, what kind of works do we have in our life? When you fellowship with God, what kind of works do you have? What kind of attitude do you have? What kind of behavior do you have? You call, you, you call yourself a Christian, a Christian, but yet you are doing the wrong things that you are not supposed to do. When we call ourselves a Christian, we are not supposed to do certain things, but yet we are calling ourselves Christians. Christians. Thank you, Jesus. James chapter 4, verse 4. James chapter 4, verse 4. James chapter 4, verse 4. Ye adulteress, know ye not that friendship with the world is enmity against God. When we are friends with the world, whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. Do ye think that ye scripture said in vain, the spirit in us dwelleth lost to envy, but he giveth more grace. Wherefore he said, God resisted the proud and he gave grace to the humble. When you are looking at yourself that you are right. When you are looking at yourself that you are good. You are looking at yourself that you are, you are, you are the best man. God resisted the proud. And he gave grace to the humble. Therefore, the Bible says, Submit yourselves, therefore, unto God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your heart, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted, and mourn, and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning, and your joy into heaviness. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. Speak not evil of another brethren. He that speaketh evil of his brother and judgeth his brother, speaketh evil of the law and judgeth the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art no doer of the law, but a judge. Speak not evil of your own brother nor condemn your brother, nor speak evil of him. 
Speak evil not of your brother. Speak evil not of your friend. Speak evil not of your neighbor. Speak evil not of your sister. Speak evil not of your uncle. Speak evil not of whoever it is that is that is related to you. Speak evil not of anyone. Because whatever we are saying, God hears everything. Even though you can say it, I'm not there. Even though your brother might not be there when you are speaking evil against him. Even though your sister might not be there when you are planning against him. Even though your brother might not be there when you are trying to do everything. Remember that whatever it is that you are saying, God hears everything that you are saying. He hears everything and he, he sees everything that is done in secret. He knows everything that is done in secret and he hears everything that is done in secret. So therefore, speak not evil of your friends. Speak not evil of your friend. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 to 23. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 to 23. <laughs> Matthew chapter 7, 21 to 23. Hmm. Thank you, Father. Not everyone that said, Lord, Lord, shall come into the kingdom. You see, there are so many verses. We have Matthew 7, 1 to 20. There's another verse I read in John, which is the same chapter that said that not everyone that said, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of God, but he that doeth the will of the Father, that is in heaven. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, verse 12. Romans chapter 12, verse 12. Thank you, Jesus. We give you all the praise. We magnify your name. Romans chapter 12, verse 12. Mm -hmm. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love in how perfecting one another not slothful in business serving the lord rejoicing in hope patient in tribulation continuing instant in prayer you see that again i read that for you in first thessalonians chapter 5 16 to 18 tells us to pray every time the same thing here in romans chapter 12 verse 2 says Continue in instant prayer, distributing to all the necessity of the saints, giving to hospitality, and bless them that persecute you. Bless and not curse them. Rejoice with them that do rejoice, and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind to one another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estates. Be not wise in your own eyes. Be not wise in your own eyes. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Somebody did something bad to you. You want to retaliate. You want to revenge. Revenge. The Bible says, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. Vengeance is mine. When someone does something bad to you, leave it for God and let God deal with the issue. There's no need for you to take revenge. There's no need for you to take matters into your hand. Let God come down and deal with the issue himself. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. You don't need to revenge whatever anybody does to you. That's what the Bible say here. Be of the same mind to one another. Recompense no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of men. And if it be possible as he has lied to you, live peacefully with all men. And dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves. Vengeance. Avenge not, but rather give Give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if thy enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so by doing it, you are heaping coals of fire upon his head. 
Be not overcome evil, but overcome evil for good. Overcome evil for good. John chapter 12, verse 48 to 49. John chapter 12, from verse 48 to 49. 48 to 49. He that rejected me and received not my words, hmm, hath not that judgment him the word which I have spoken. The same shall judge him on the last day. For I have not spoken myself, but the Father which sent me, and he gave me a commandment, a commandment what I should say and what I should speak. And I know his commandment is life everlasting. Wherefore, whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. So I speak. I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. God has come to save the world. There are many sinners in this world. There are many people who are doing the bad things. It's not that God is slow. If you look at it, some people are saying, oh, God is taking time. Everybody is saying it. God is coming. Jesus is coming. They have said it in the time of Noah. He didn't come. Remember when he came in the time of Noah? They were busy eating and drinking and making merry when the flood came and wiped them off. He's so slow, he's not coming. He's so slow, he's not coming. The reason why that is happening is because God is patient with you. He wants you to repent, to give your life to him so that all the bad things that you are doing, you can come to me. The Bible says, come unto me, all ye that heavy laden, and I will give you rest. It's not that he's slow. It doesn't mean that he's slow in what he's saying. It doesn't mean the Lord is not slow. He's not slow in his behavior or his attitude. But what he's doing that he is being patient with you because he wants you to repent. He wants you to repent. He wants you to repent. He died for you. He wants you to repent and come to him on the cross of Calvary so that your life can be saved. That's the reason to you. He's waiting for you to repent. He's waiting for you to come to him. So it's not that he's been slow. He's not slow. He's just you to come to him and give your life to him so that he can remove you from the light of darkness and save your soul. Matthew chapter 16 from verse 24 to 25. Matthew 16 verse 24 to 25. 24 to 25. Then Jesus said unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever shall save his life shall lose it, but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what, for what is a man profited if he will gain the whole world and lose his soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of the Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. So that works that you think that you are doing, continue. You are doing something good, continue. Don't give up. You are doing something right. Continue. Don't give up. The Bible said the time is coming when the Son of Man will come and he will reward everyone according to his works. If you are doing the bad things, the reward is there. If you are doing the good things, the reward is there. Everyone will get his reward according to what he does in this world that we are. Remember, this world is just a passing face. 
you are just passing, passing through this world. It's just a passing phase. It's not a permanent phase. Adam and Eve has passed through the same phase. Peter has passed through the same phase. Je Joseph has passed through the same phase. David came to this world. He has passed through the same phase. Samuel came. All the men of God in the Bible, they all came and they passed through the same phase. And they went the same way. The same phase. Everything in this world is vanity upon vanity. It is good that you should have it because God wants you to have it for a reason so that you can be successful in life, so that you can reach your destiny, so that you can attain what you want you to attain. That is the reason why God wants you to have those things so that success can come your way. The only way you can be successful is for God to lift you up through your job, for God to lift you up through so many things, for God to lift you up to be successful in life, to make sure that you are successful, to achieve the plan and purpose of God for your life. The plan and purpose of God for your life is for you to be successful, for God to make you to be able to reach an unexpected end. All those things that you have, those cars, those those houses, those everything is part of the plan of God for you to have them so that success can come your way. But remember, the Bible says, don't put those things on your mind. Let your mind be in heaven. Let your mind be with the Father because all those things will pass away. All those things will pass away after you have attained your success with all your good works and everything that you have done. We shall descend and ascend to the Father in heaven on that last day. So the Son of Man shall come in glory with his angels and he shall reward every man. Verily, verily, I say unto you, there are some standing here that will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming into his kingdom. Luke chapter 6, verse 46. Luke chapter 6, verse 46. Luke chapter 6, verse 46. A good man out of a good treasure of the heart bringeth forth which is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of the heart bringeth forth which is evil. For the abundance out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. You see? And ye shall call me Lord, Lord, and do the things which I say. Whosoever cometh unto me and heareth my sayings and doeth and, and do them, I will show you to whom he was like. He is like a man that built his house that digged deep and laid foundation of the rock. And the rock arose and he beat them upon that rock. And it will not shake. Anytime we hear the voice of God, the Bible is comparing you to a rock that stands firm. When the enemy come with all his companions, when the enemy come with all his temptation, you are standing firm. You are unshakable. He sees that he cannot shake you. He has tried everything in his power. He cannot shake you because you are Christ, the solid rock you are standing all other ground is sinking sand. John chapter 16 verse 33. John chapter 16 verse 33. Hmm. John chapter 16 verse 33. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, John. John chapter 16 verse 33. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye shall have peace, but in the world ye shall have tribulation. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. 
You see that? Do you now believe the Hawa comets when ye shall be scattered, every man in his own, and shall leave me alone, and yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. You see, these things I have spoken, in Jesus there is peace. In this world, there is tribulation in this world. Tribulation in this world, persecution in this world, the people Tribulate. The people persecuted Paul when he was arrested. They did the same thing to Jesus when he was arrested. There's tribulation in this world. But the Bible is telling you to be of good cheer. Because Jesus has overcome the world. He has overcome the world. All those problems you are going through. Jesus has overcome the world. All those sicknesses that is affecting your life. Jesus has overcome the world. That door that the enemy has closed against you. Makanda Rebo Sekete. Jesus has overcome the world. That problem that you are facing. Jesus has overcome the world. That problem that you are facing at your place of work, Jesus has overcome the world. That promotion that they did not give to you, but now, by the power of the Holy Ghost, you will receive it in the name of Jesus. Jesus has overcome the world. That thing that you are going through, that door that has been shut against you, let it be opened by the power of the Holy Ghost, because Jesus has overcome the world. That sickness, that pain in your leg, it has been it has been de destroyed by the power of God because Jesus has overcome the world. That blindness upon your life that you cannot see properly, it has been destroyed because Jesus has overcome the world. That no that that ear pain that you are having upon your ears that is making you not to hear properly, begin to receive your hearing right now because Jesus has overcome the world. The king of kings has overcome the world. If Jesus has overcome the world, there is no more pain. There is no more sickness. There is no more sorrow. There is no more sadness. There is no more impossibility. Everything upon your life shall begin to go smoothly because Jesus has overcome the world. The Jehovah Shalom has overcome the world. Begin to rejoice. Begin to sing songs. Begin to worship God. Begin to worship God. Begin to exalt God. Begin to magnify his name. Begin to worship him. He deserves the praise. He deserves the glory. Because Jesus has overcome the world. In this world, there is tribulation. Pending all the tribulation that there is in this world. Jesus has come to this world. He has overcome the world. Because he has overcome the world, there is no more pain. There's no more sickness. There's no more sorrow. There's no more impossibility. All the doors that have been shut against you, they have been opened because Jesus has overcome the world. Makatabareko sekete. Jesus has overcome the world. The King of Kings has overcome the world. The Jehovah Shalom has overcome the world. The Omnipotent God has overcome the world. The ever-present God in time of trouble has overcome the world. Jesus has overcome the world. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. We give you all the praise. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 13. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 13. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 13. Love not sleep, lest thou come to poverty. Open thy eyes, and thou shalt be satisfied with bread. Love not sleep. Lest thou come to poverty. Open thy eyes and thou shalt be satisfied with bread. The Bible is telling you, love not sleep. Don't sleep too much. When you sleep too much, the Bible says the enemy crawleth in. 
he crawled in. The Bible talked, the Bible said that when you sleep too much, the enemy came and sowed bad seed. He came and sowed bad seed when the man was sleeping. He came to sow bad seed upon the good seed. And when the two of them began to grow, they told the master, what shall we do? Shall we uproot the bad seed? He said, no, leave it alone. Let the good seed begin to grow with the bad seed. Because we sleep too much, sometimes the enemy come to sow bad seed. Sleep too much. Love not sleep, lest thou come to poverty. Sleeping. Love not sleep, lest thou come to poverty. And finally, Proverbs chapter 20, verse 19. He that goeth as a talebearer revealeth secrets. Therefore, meddle not with him that flattereth with his lips. He that goeth as a tail bearer revealed secrets. These are all the things that we do when we deny God. When you are revealing secrets, any tail bearer, tail bearer revealing secrets, somebody tell you a secret, don't tell anybody. You tell them, don't do this, you do that. Every secret that you are revealing is denying God and the power therein. Denying God any time you refuse to follow the things and the commandment of God. We are denying God. We are because God has given you his commandment to follow. It's not a it's not like a, I will do it when I'm ready, or I will do it when I have to do it. I will do it in my own time. In my own time, I will do it. I'm not ready for it now. It's a commandment. Commandment is a must for you to do it. It's a must. The ten, the, what, what does it mean, the Ten Commandment? The Ten Commandment. Commandment, ashe. Eh? Authority. A commandment. Somebody command you. You tell your child, you command your child, go and bring that iron for me. You, call, you told him to go and do it. He has to do it because you are the father. You tell your, 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 your daughter, go and bring that thing for me on the table. Your daughter has to follow it. He must, she must follow your word because you are the father. She is the daughter. So when you are telling your child to do something and your child does not do it, how do you feel? Do you feel happy? No, you don't feel happy. It's the same way with between you and God. When God commands you to do something and you are not doing it, God is not happy about it. He is feeling it. What is wrong with it that is not what why is she not listening to my word? Why is she not obeying my word? You don't want to tell your child, your earthly child, to do something and your child refuses to do it. No human being, no father in this world will like it. No father will like to instruct his child or instruct his, his daughter or instruct any member of his family to do something and they refuse to do it. That person will feel hurt. I am giving you an order. Go and do this thing. You must do it. Because it's an authority you are telling your child to do something. He has to do it. Because as a father, you have authority over your child. As a father, you have authority over your daughter. The same thing as an earthly father. The same thing as an heavenly father. You are a child of God. If you are a child of God, you have the same authority that God has. If you are an earthly father, your, your, your son too, you tell your child to do something and your, your daughter doesn't do it. Will you feel happy about it? No. 
So the same thing pertain to the Heavenly Father. The Heavenly Father has instructed you, pray always, pray instantly. Don't do this. Don't commit sin. Do not do wine is a mocker. Whoever gives to it is not wise. All these things that you are doing is a commandment. He has given you and I a commandment you have to follow. It's not a matter of, I will do what I want. I am my own body. It's not your business. Let me do it the way I want. Well, God will leave you away, will leave you alone. Because remember, everybody has a choice. You, the Bible said you have to make your choice who you want to follow. Make your choice who you want to serve. Make your choice who you want to serve. God will not force you. He will only speak to you. God doesn't use force. It is the devil that uses force against somebody. God doesn't use force. He leaves you to make your choice. He leaves you to do what you want to do. He leaves you to obey and do what you want to do for him. He does not force. He does not force. He does not force. Mm -hmm. He does not force. Proverbs chapter 20 verse 19. Mm -hmm. Meddle not with him that, that have flattered lips. Meddle not with him. A tail bearer that reveals secret. Meddle not with him. Eh? If you are a Christian and you are living in rebellion... You are living in rebellion or you hate your brother. Eh? Mark chapter 12 verse 30. And denying God by your lifestyle. Mark chapter 12 verse 30. Mark chapter 12 verse 30. Hmm? Mark chapter 12. Chapter 12 verse 30. Verse 30, verse 30. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. And this is the second is like, thou shalt love thy neighbor and thyself. There is no commandment greater than this. Eh? We, are, we deny God by the lifestyle that we lead, the lifestyle we live. But many people just do what they want. Dress anyhow. Do the things that you want to do. Well, God has a right to give you your choice to make which choice you want to do. Eh? Being like the world, always trying to be a friend of the world. Hmm? Trying to be a friend. The world will love its own. The world will love its own people. The world will love his own people. Hmm? If no, none of your friends can identify you as Christians, something is wrong. If none of your friends can identify you as a Christian, they should be able to identify you and say, this man is a Christian. He's a true Christian. He's a true believer. If they cannot identify you as a Christian, something is wrong. They need to be able to identify you as a Christian. And I pray for you by the power of the Holy Spirit of the living God, the power that will enable you, the power that will enable you to continue to grow in the word of God, continue to do the things of God, continue to follow the commandment of God and do his will. The power of the Holy Ghost will rest upon you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Father, we give God a praise. Thank you, Holy Spirit of the living God. All power, all dominion be unto you. In Jesus' anointed name we pray. Amen. Thank you, everyone. The Lord will continue to bless you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Don't forget, we need to continue to do what God asks us to do so that we don't disobey. Disobedience to God is like denying God. 
disobedience to God. We need to be obedient to the word of God. And don't think that you are able to do it by yourself. Everything is by the power of God. Don't think that it's by your power that you are able to do all these things that I'm doing. It's by your power that you are able to speak the word of God. It's by your power that you are able to do everything that you are doing. It's not my, it's not by your power. It's not my power. I don't have power to do anything unless God back it up. And you likewise, no, no man of God has power to do anything. If God is not there, it will not work. No man of God has power because we are human. We are human being. I'm a human being. You are a human being. All those who are doing signs and wonders and miracles is because the hand of God is upon it. The power of God is upon it. No man has the physical power to do anything unless the power of God is there, unless the backing of God is there. So when the backing of God is there, you need to give God all the praise and all the honor that is due unto him. I pray for you once again by the power of the Holy Spirit of the living God, the power of the Holy Ghost that will enable you to flow in the things of God shall rest upon you by the power of Jesus. In Jesus' anointed name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much. The Lord will continue to provide for you in Jesus. And don't forget, Jesus is coming soon. Jesus is coming soon. When he comes, where will he find you? Will he find you drinking in the pub? Or will he find you smoking? Or where will he find you? Or will he find you reading and digesting the word and doing the things that he asks you to do? I pray for you by the power of the Holy Spirit of the living God. By the time the Lord comes back, the Lord and the power of God will rest upon you. In Jesus' anointed name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much. The Lord will continue to provide for you in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and grant you his peace now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, shall we all see the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, everyone. God bless you.